Welcome everyone, Simitar here. As I was already saying in previous video, Oblivion modding stage is very active actually even today. And it has much more mods than you could possibly imagine, making this legendary game feel much more interesting and absolutely refreshed. And today I will show you 5 more absolutely brilliant mods of various types for Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Some of them you have missed for sure. Let's take a look. The hotkeys was an internal and notorious problem of Oblivion. 8 hotkeys for everything in the game? And what if you are playing like me a modded game with a new spells, equipment and your inventory or spell pack is looking like this? Very limited hotkey system forces you always to reopen your inventory, spell menu, changing the bindings all the time making game absolutely uncomfortable. Forget about this. With Enhanced Hotkeys mod, you now have 40 hotkeys instead of 8 and 4 hotkey wheels, so up to 160 hotkeys in total, but that's just a top of an iceberg. If you're using hotkey for a spell, you can assign an autocast for it, meaning spell will be casted automatically and you don't even need to press the C button. You can equip as many spells as you want or as many armors as you want to a single hotkey and multicast them pressing this hotkey. That's I mean, incredibly useful for buffs for example, just assign 5 buff spells multicast on chosen hotkey and enjoy. Many spell mods for example allow you to summon multiple summons. You can do the same with conjuration spells as well, summoning your army in a one key pressing. In addition, Enhanced Hotkey system supports literally all possible key bindings, and you can assign any key to any hotkey, even the additional mouse buttons. One of the big disappointments in Oblivion, at least for me, was the fact you was not able to join Imperial Legion as a faction, progressing ranks, arrest the criminals and so on. The Legion NPCs were more like a design element of the game and nothing more. Under the sign of a dragon, Fort Akatosh Redux is an amazing mod that allows you to actually join Imperial Legion as a fully working faction, with headquarters, ranks progression system, a lot of new quests, new armors, weapons and so on. There are three factions to join, Imperial Legion as the main one, but you can also join the Imperial Cult and even the North East Trading Company to make a trading quests. The mod is done with great attention to immersion and overall details, most of NPCs are named. Guards salute you when you are passing by or talking to them. And it even has all loading screens with lore information. The fort itself is really big and actually looks like a fort, with the headquarters, a lot of watchtowers, barracks, storages, warehouses, arsenal, separate offices for commanding ranks and even interrogation chamber. When you will join the Legion, you will start to receive various quests to perform special jobs in different corners of Cyrodiil. Visit the Cyrodiil watchtowers to light their fires, investigate gloomy forts and necromancer lairs, sometimes with really creepy atmosphere, meet completely new enemy creatures, fight bandit squads and name bandit bosses and even take part in massive battles helping the Legion to push back hordes of wild creatures or invaders near the borders. You will meet the members of new factions and also be able to see and obtain completely new guard uniforms. What is also really great is the fact mod is almost fully voiced and voiced good, which is a rare case for Oblivion modding stage. Well, listen out a few brief examples. Hail! Arsenal Sergeant Trustus Gaius at your service. Ah, a new recruit. Well, let's have a look what we've got for you. By climbing up the ranks, you will get better equipment and maybe even special rewards for particular bravery. Welcome to Fort Akatosh, Legionnaire. I am Sinue Estrekis, Supreme Commander of the Legions of Tamriel. We felt safe for all these years, and now, at least we have to pay the price for our stupid arrogance. Bandits, murderers, necromancers, secret cults, separatists, there is trouble in nearly every part of Tamriel. Fort Akatosh Redux is definitely between the most original and qualitative faction mods for Oblivion. 
The Elder Scrolls series has great variety of species and diversity of races. The only, but really big, problem was that vanilla racial and birth sign abilities, besides maybe just a few ones like a Red Guard Greater Power was really cool, yeah, were becoming almost useless in miming of gameplay. In mid and late game, most of bonuses and bonuses given by powers were plain static and that's why the more levels you gained, the less useful these abilities were, usually. Maybe the greatest example was the Lord Stone. While giving you 25% weakness to fire, it gave you 90 points self-healing power. Now imagine you are already like level 50 and has like 700 health. This power is now simply useless for you. Time to forget about this. Meet Taeon races and birth sign improvement mods. Yes, these are two mods actually, but you can simply consider them as one as they are from the same author and doing the same. These mods are improving and changing racial and birth sign abilities and powers, making them not only much more interesting but still law friendly, but also effective at all levels and stages of the game. Let me show you some of the most noticeable examples. High Elves Resist disease was decreased a bit, but in return they received 50% paralysis resistance. But the most interesting starts now. In vanilla, High Elves have a static bonus of 100 magicka, with Trap stands for Taeon Racial Adjustment Package. This bonus equals to H, where H stands for highest attribute. Greater power restores magicka in amount equals 4 H. This change is looking really simple, but result is amazing. Once again, H stands for highest attribute. So, if let's say intellect is your highest one and equals 50, you will have 100 bonus magicka and 200 magicka instant replenishment as a greater power usage. But as you will become stronger and your attributes will grow, your bonuses and power will grow as well. As you can see, I have now 186 magicka bonus from racial passive as my intellect is now 93, and greater power restores 372 magicka, which is more than useful even at high levels. The second benefit from this approach is not so obvious but not less great. H standing for highest attribute, meaning it can be any of your attributes. For example, you want to build into some kind of mm, Dread Knight build, a warrior in heavy armor, shield and sword, but with conjuration powers. Things like this were not very viable in vanilla, but now you can actually do this. Just pick a high elf as your race, but go into completely warrior build. Focus on combat skills and rise your androids and strengths first of all, but your racial passive will still work all the same, just scaling from androids. So you'll have a lot of health, physical damage and armor, but also big mana pool for multiple conjuration summons. Here we go, a real and absolutely competitive hybrid build. Another great example, Khajiit. Well, why such a low fall damage from such a big height, you may ask? Surely, acrobatics decreases this damage, but still, it is looking too damn good. Nothing special, just the Khajiits now have additional passive fall damage reduction, naturally representing their feline agility in gameplay. Eye of Fear power remains almost the same, but its effect time is now dynamic and affected by your, yes, highest attribute as well, meaning it will be very useful and will allow you to have almost perma control on one of your enemies in battle. Oh, and how do you have more than 100 agility, you may ask? Well, we will get to that soon. Here comes the ultimate Khajiit's power, called Sugar. For 60 seconds, it increases your acrobatics for 5H and athletics for 2H. Yep, 535 acrobatics boosts. Just look at this. Now the birth signs. Each birth sign may now have one or several passives, one regular power with 12 seconds cooldown and one greater power. Remember that dull and late game useless Lord birth sign power? No more. Instead of giving you weak healing spell, Lord now passively regenerates 1% of your maximum HP per second, already making it useful on all levels. The more HP you will have, the more you will passively heal. Regular power, time lapse. For 13 seconds, your passive regeneration is tripled. 
but you take almost triple damage in return. That's some kind of double edge skill that should be used wisely, but it is really useful for healing out of combat and just interesting tactical power. Greater power, Vora Spire, stops your passive regeneration for 60 seconds, but in return, all enemies around you within 30 feet suffer the same damage as fire damage. This power literally allows you to convert your health into damage source. And as it is in percents, the more health you will have, the more damage your fire aura will deal. Another last and maybe the most fun example, the Steed. First of all, Steed greatly increases your carry weight and gives you passive water walking, which is great for exploration. Regular power, Charioteer, gives you 1000 Feather and 1000 Speed bonus for 1 second, with 12 seconds cooldown as usual. While fitting Steed style greatly, this power is insanely fun to use and giving you great tactical advantage in combat, but not overpowered because of decent cooldown, when you need to break the distance and shoot enemies with your magic or bow. By the way, it plays amazing synergy with Khajiit's Sugar ability, which increases acrobatics and athletics and so speed as well, move and strike fast as lightning. Greater power, burden of souls, burden everyone 30 feet nearby you for 1000 points. Simple as that, a great saving ability which will literally paralyze enemies around you with this crushing weight, giving you time to recover, run away or just shoot them all to death. Now returning to the question about 111 agility. Oblivion is a huge game, but it has some sort of leveling issue, which was quite obvious, unlike in Skyrim, here, only 7 main skills will rise in your level, meaning that when you have all 7 main skills at 100, yes, you simply can't level up anymore, which was making game progression much less motivating. And here AV and Capper saves the day. Tiny mod working simple, it uncaps both attributes and skills so you are now able to rise them above 100. The main part here is that all attributes and skills formulas, such as weapon damage and spell cost, are affected by the skills above 100 as well, meaning you can now have more damage and cheaper spells. This simple but effective improvement makes rising your level much more rewarding and first of all, you now actually can rise your level as much as you want. Also answering on possible question, no, this mod is not unbalanced or overpowered, because there is also an ini file for it where you can set up all the settings and enable and adjust so-called diminishing balancing feature, meaning that the bigger your attribute or skill will go above 100, the less it will give us bonus. You can tweak these features as you like, so uncapped attributes and skills will not make game too easy, but still give you a motivation to rise them. After several in-depth gameplay mods, I think we need to finish this video with something beautiful, right? Meet Unique Landscapes Compilation. This one is a huge mod, a compilation of several dozens landscape overhauls for almost every region of Cyrodiil. It is affecting exterior locations, making them looking much more diverse, interesting and unique, but still keeping everything in a low friendly way. New forests, dark forests and abandoned villages, shipwrecks and more clutter here and there, swamps, creeks and hills, thousands of additions and changes to make oblivion landscapes shine. It is that type of mod you install and forget, but once you install it, you starting to think like, whoa, how did I play without it before? Locations are now looking simply as they should look. Well, let the pictures tell you more than a thousand words.
That's all for today folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some new mods for your Oblivion setup. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch. Simitar Gaming here, signing out. Yeah, I'm on your side. Yeah, hit me once more, hit me once more, and I'll kill you.